Hi, my name is William, and this is my Music 158A project. What I have here is a completed effects rack for live vocals, and ultimately I wanted this to be a set of tools for live vocal performance, you know, everything that you could possibly need to manipulate and adjust your sound as you're performing. So to start, uh, I have a settings box in the top left corner, basically controls microphone, sound, you can turn it on and off, you can adjust the gain, and you can also ultimately choose to send whatever you're producing through a filter or you can do it unfiltered. And what I mean by that is I have a setting over here called filter control, which allows you to run audio through these different presets. So for example, low path, high pass, and everything in between, low shelf, high shelf, all pass. And um, if you don't like the presets, you can manually control the frequency cutoffs over here. And next to that is the loop station. And this basically allows you to create a loop of sounds. Uh, a loop that is this long, the buffer size controls how long each loop is. And this thing is voice activated. So when it never it detects a sound, it's going to add that to the loop. So let me give you a quick demonstration of that. So you get an idea, um, you can lay yourself an instrumental track and then perform on top of that. It's great. Uh, and kind of along the same lines, we have here the uh, samples box, which allows you to record your own samples to play in real time. Or you can insert your own file. Clicking this will open up the file manager. Okay. And uh, yeah, let me show you real quick. Hi, my name is William. This is my Music 158A project. Pretty cool, huh? Well, that's a button. Bye. Uh, you basically control it with the numbers over here. And if you really like your performance, you can record it with um, this setup over here, it tells you the lapse time. It's actually what I'm using to record this performance right now. And last but not least, we have these um, these tools, these time-related tools, uh, which I think are really helpful. So you have here a timer, which tells you the elapsed time since you've toggled it on. You have a metronome. Um, this metronome takes in three settings. It can take in the BPM. It tells you, uh, it asks for how many beats per measure and um, that's important because it plays a different sound for the first downbeat. And then lastly, you can subdivide each beat. So subdivide into two, you get eighth notes. Into four, you get sixteenth notes. Get the idea. And if you you know you know what tempo you want to go at, but you don't really know the number, you can tap this out, and it'll give you an approximate estimate of how fast you're tapping. Okay, so uh, that's it for the tools. Now on to the effects rack. Uh, in no particular order, we have vibrato, ring modulation, delay, reverb, tremolo, stutter, pitch shift, distortion, flanger, echo, and chorus. I'm going to give you a quick run through of each effect and, you know, demonstrate it a little bit. Uh, at the core of it all is this effects rack over here. And it's basically playing this kind of connect the dots system. Uh, we want our audio to go through this uh, microphone, like I'm doing right now. And we choose what effect we want it to go through first. So let's say we want it to go through uh, vibrato, you know. It'll go through vibrato. And then over here, comes up here into this input again, into the vibrato column. And if you want that to output to the speakers, you have to put output on the vibrato column. So this allows you to potentially string along multiple effects. 
You can chain an unlimited amount of effects. You can chain through all of the effects. You can chain through all the effects twice. Um, there's basically a lot of possibilities. So, yeah, let's start off with uh, with the vibrato, which is basically a frequency, slight frequency change in the audio that's coming through to kind of create this fluctuation in the sound. So, so that was vibrato. Uh, you can control, you know, how often it fluctuates and the depth of each fluctuation. Next up we have is delay. And basically, delay is capturing a segment of incoming sound and outputting it later um, at a predetermined length, at a predetermined amplitude. Um, all you have to do is hold down the control button for when you want to record, such as this, this, like this, like this, and there's a delay, and there's a delay. So that's that. Uh, and then we have reverb, uh, which basically can turn your, your sound, your voice, into one that appears as if you're, say, standing in a very big room. So let me show you that. Hello. It sounds like I'm in a very big concert hall, but I'm actually just in my room. Uh, the next effect we have tremolo, which is very similar to vibrato, but instead of doing these frequency fluctuations, we're actually doing fluctuations in amplitude. So you kind of get the similar effect, but it's it's done quite differently. So that was tremolo. Next up we have a stutter, which is an effect that's similar to delay, except it captures a specific sound and it replays it constantly for a predetermined amount of time. So let me show you that. As if we're stuttering. So this is how it works. How, 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 how. Pretty cool. Okay, now on to the next one. One, 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 one. All right. So next effect is pitch shift, and this basically can make you sound like a chipmunk or make you sound like you have a very deep voice. And over here, I have a list of common intervals. Um, they're basically major thirds, perfect fourths, perfect fifths. These are intervals that if you were to use this and send in your own voice at the same time, you can kind of self-harmonize. Uh, I'm going to show you that right now. So uh, the original pitch is, is set at this position. I guess it's middle C. And you can make your voice sound higher, higher. Higher, 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 and higher. Or you can make your voice sound lower and lower and lower and lower. So that was a pitch shift. Now we're on to distortion, which basically pushes the audio coming through through a lot of gain, and uh, it starts clipping. Uh, because the speakers can't output that, and we're cutting off certain frequencies of the human voice. Um, just because a person has a low voice doesn't mean their voice is only a low frequency. It's a spectrum of frequencies. And what we're doing here is basically cutting off frequencies. So you kind of get this degraded kind of quality of sound. So you can tell that there's feedback in the background because the gain is really high, but you can also tell my voice has been degraded. It sounds like the quality has been lowered. 
the next effect we have is the flanger and um, basically by playing around with a low frequency oscillator and we're introducing a feedback loop that is offset by a delay we get this kind of interesting um, interesting timbre to the sound coming through hello, hello? Yeah, yeah that's, that's a little, little bit strange, strange. And, and you can, can play around with the settings to get something that you would like. Uh, that's true for a lot of these settings. You can play around with them, see what you like, stick with it. There are minimum and maximum values to kind of keep you in the right uh, place without getting weird sounds. Or at least sounds that are too weird. Uh, next up we have is Echo, and it's a lot like Delay and Stutter, except... Uh, it fades over time, and this is controlled by the feedback and the delay. Delay is the amount of time in between each successive echo, and feedback is basically how long you want the echo to last. Echo. 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 Hello. Hi. Echo, 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 by a certain amount of time, usually a very small uh, amount of milliseconds, to give the voice a fuller sound because you don't want the vocalist to be overpowered by the backup singers or the instrumental. And uh, this effect is basically uh, offsetting multiple occurrences of the audio going through, uh, not only temporally, but also um, in the frequencies. So you could tell that my voice is a little bit fuller now, and you can play around with the settings to, to kind of get that optimal match to be put on top of the instrumental. So that's all I have uh, for my final project. I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.